now This MMA what we talking about Yeah, you tuned into the pod now Gonna be hard for you to stop now Yeah, we caged in Yeah, we caged in. Welcome back to another episode of Caged In. I'm your host, Chris DiCarlo. Got a very special guest on the line with us today. He's fighting at Cage Titans 58. It's John Duma. How we doing, my man? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for taking some time to come talk to me, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, you're the first time on the show, man, so whenever I get uh, new guys on the show, I like to get into the background a little bit, get to know you a little bit better. Um, so just talk about, like, uh, where you were born and raised and how growing up was like for you. Uh, I was grow- I grew up in New Jersey, actually. Um, I moved out here when I was 18. I was uh, I went to tech school at uh, New England Tech. So um, I just, like, packed up and moved here on my own, and, like, I got real bored and got an MMA that way. There you go. Oh, wow. um, were you an athlete growing up? Did you play any sports and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. I wrestled um, since I was in like the fourth grade. And then I, I played football all throughout and, you know, but I, I, I really enjoyed wrestling when I was a kid. So it nice. was like my main sport. Nice. So I'm sure that's the wrestling background is kind of what leaked over to MMA. So how was that transition and the journey like for you into the space of mixed martial arts? It was pretty good. Like it was, for me, it was refreshing because like I was... I stopped wrestling at at the end of high school. Like I was pretty burnt out with it, mm-hmm. um, and then always kind of knew I wanted to pick up MMA. So when I did, it was like it was like I, I fell in love with wrestling and all that all over again. So it was right. awesome. There you go, man. Um, what was like the first gym that kind of got you that you got started in? The same gym I'm at now is in Triforce. There you go. Let's talk about it a little bit, man. Triforce MMA. Um, you said you've been there since you started your journey in MMA. So for those of the people that don't know, maybe they're listening to the podcast and, and, and haven't heard about Triforce before. Um, can you just describe the vibe of your gym and the atmosphere of your gym and kind of uh, your experience there? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's like my home away from home. Like it's an awesome place. Um, you know, we got great jujitsu guys, great MMA guys. Um, it's a family gym. There's always kids classes going on there. Um, my my coach my head coach pete the owner of the gym he's like he's like, he's like my dad almost you know what right. i mean uh, yeah yeah it just makes a great environment for everybody i know you got a lot of uh great training partners over there that you know iron sharpens iron you definitely don't have um a lack of good guys to keep you sharp uh, can you just talk about some of the guys you train with and um how it's like you getting rounds in with those guys every day yeah 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 we got um uh, just some guys fighting coming up uh we got dion rubio uh, he's going to be fighting on that combat zone card uh, yeah. right before mine. Shane Dillahay is fighting with me on that um, that card. Uh, Dion Perry is fighting with me. We have um, Santi Munoz is fighting with me. So I mean, just you know, just to name a couple of the guys that are that are there, it's and it's awesome having them do their fight camp at the same time as me because everybody's getting ready for the same thing. It's like you know, it creates a vibe at the gym. Yeah, definitely, man. It's got to be a cool environment when you all kind of have that same mission and you're all getting ready for, you know, you're fighting within either that, that same day or a few days before. So I'm sure all you guys are dialed in, getting locked in and getting ready to go to war. Yep. Yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, yeah, man. I love to hear. Um, have you added any new elements or any new wrinkles to your training camp specifically for this fight or or any other gyms that you've been outletting in or getting other work in elsewhere? Um, not <laughs> not for just for this fight specifically, like. Right, right after my last fight, um, I ended up getting a new job, and it just mm-hmm. opened up a ton of training time for me. So I was able to add in, like, uh, I do Muay Thai now with uh, Tom Hafers once a week. Nice. Um, I've been doing uh, strength and conditioning, um, just, like, adding on all the little extra things that uh, that I always wanted to do, when, you know, and now that I can, I have a chance. It's It's been awesome. Yeah, man, that's awesome. It's good to hear. It's never a bad idea to, you know. Obviously, when you have the time, you can go in there and get even more work in. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're a, uh, you know, watching your fights. I've seen you fight in the past, and you know, obviously preparing for this. You know, I dug a little deeper going into your fight history and whatnot. You're a very exciting fighter to watch. I don't think I've seen you in a boring fight. So how would you kind of describe your style and describe yourself as a fighter? Yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess you'd say it's a little bit more of a gritty style. Um, you know, I kind of every fight I'm in, I kind of make it a fight. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've, I think, you know, especially in the past few years, I've, I've gotten a lot more technical with things. So it's not just a dog fight in there every time, you know, I'm, I'm, I've gotten my black belt since, um, 
you know, I, I've, I've worked on a ton of boxing. My boxing coach, Vic Fagman, he's one of the best boxing coaches around. So I've been doing a lot of a lot of that. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm more of a technical fighter now, but I still have that dog in me. Of course. Uh, you're seven and three as a pro, man. You've, you know, made your way through a bunch of big promotions. You know, you've been at Cage Titans. You've been to CES Combat Zone, CEFF or CFFC and Bellator, of course. Um, how has kind of bouncing around to different promotions in the area, how has that helped um, turn you into the fighter that you are now? It's good, man. I think I think it prepares me for the future a little bit. Um, sure. You know, having to travel and stay in hotel rooms right before, because that's what every UFC fight is going to be like. Right. So, um, you know, I, I started my career in Rhode Island, you know, just being able to stay at my house and go fight that night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but as I grow more as an athlete and like gotten used to the process, I think traveling around, you know, it helps. Um, you know, it just helps with the, with all that. Yeah, I'm sure all the different experiences that you've been able to go through, um, you know, have been good and give you a lot of experience. And uh, like you said, like once you make it to the UFC, you'll be no stranger to uh, the bright lights and the and the traveling and <laughs> the hotel rooms and all that stuff. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, you know, you let's talk about those Bellator Bellator cards for a bit, man. And you were you did fight for them through COVID. Um, what was it like going through, like fighting for a bigger promotion um, in Connecticut when they were kind of housing there for, through COVID? What was it like just through like going through the protocols and you know having to fight in an empty arena and stuff like that? Yeah, it was weird, but uh, I I liked it. Um, part of it, you know, the fighting part was nice because it seemed like it was we were just sparring in there, you know. Right. So it was different. Like it was a cool, different experience to have. I don't know if you know I'd do it every time, but right. you know to do it once was cool. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the COVID protocol wasn't fun. It was oh, like sure. I'm sure that sucked. We were in like a bubble, like a certain. We couldn't go in restaurants and stuff, and they had people out watching us, looking for fighters, sitting around. Um, we had to quarantine for like the first 24 hours. Right. Well, um, you know, good with the bad. But they they ended up giving us all our own little locker rooms and like training areas for the week, and then they gave us our own portable saunas, so that was super cool. Oh, nice. Other than that, it kind of sucked. Yeah, I was gonna say it probably doesn't sound fun. I mean, it was. I'm sure it was nice to be able to stay active during that time, though, because I know a lot of promotions yeah. kind of shut down and fighters weren't getting a lot of work in. So I'm sure from the bright side of it, I'm sure that was a positive for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like the fact that they were in Connecticut was just yeah, exactly beautiful. Um. You had the pleasure of fighting on some of those cards with some big names, man. Uh, you know, you can go run through the list of them. But do you have any, like, cool stories or cool experiences or anything like that throughout those uh, Bellator cards? You running into any – did you did you end up crossing paths with anybody uh, notable? Yeah. Or do they, they kind of keep you separated? A lot of people. Um, I fought on um, the uh, Ryan Bader show, my last one. Mm. Just interesting to see those guys, like, do how – you know – guys that have done it so many times and like how they process through fight week like um i fought the night before uh roy nelson fought mm. so it was just like <laughs> like seeing how they do their weight cuts and all that like i think bader just did like four sparring rounds and he was good he was on weight you know what i mean yeah, so it's right. like it was cool to like see how the real veterans do it yeah i'm sure it was cool to kind of just like kind of be in that same environment as them or guys that i'm sure you've growing up watching and still watch to this day or look up to and whatnot i'm sure it's cool yeah. to be able to rub yeah. elbows with those guys yeah it was like a big deal for me to fight with rory mcdonald on the same card oh, i bet fought on that, when he fought lima i think the second time mm -hmm. Dude, that was that was crazy for me yeah that is sick man that is sick um let's, i want to talk about your weight change man like after your second pro fight you ended up changing from featherweight to bantamweight what was the inspiration behind that change and uh, uh what caused that I uh it, I knew it was kind of inevitable. Uh, mm -hmm. I stayed at 145 because weight cuts suck and you don't right. want to do them for free. So um, sure. as an amateur, I, I did that and then kind of eased into my pro career at 145. And I think I don't know my coaches. Everybody was kind of on the same page when we were gonna do it. And it's just you know it's my I, I have the body style more of a of a 35 or so. Right. It's a tough cut, but. It's everybody's doing it now, you know, it's a standard. So, yeah, exactly. It is tough to, you know, fight at your natural weight class these days. You know, nobody's really 
fighting at their natural class. There's probably like a handful nah, of guys, <laughs> uh, if anybody. But um, how's the cut been for you, though? Like, have you kind of got it down now? And you, you're used to it at this point? Yeah, it's pretty dialed down now. I've done quite a few fights at 35. So, like, I know exactly what I have to do, you know, at certain times. So, like, six weeks out, I know what I should be eating. At four weeks out, I know what I should be eating. So, right. you know, it's 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 gotten pretty easy now. For sure, man. There you go. All right, man. Let's talk about Cage Titans 58, man. The reason why we're here. Bantamweight title fight versus champion Joe Penafiel, uh, known as the party by the folks at Plymouth Memorial Hall. Um, have you done the tape study on this guy yet? Uh, what do you see in his game, and how would you describe him as a fighter? Yeah, um, definitely watched a lot of video of him. Uh, he's just he's just a fighter. You know what I mean? Like he's just he seems like he loves the fight, which which you know there's a lot to be said for that. Um, I I don't know if he's the most technical guy in the world, but you know you got to watch out for guys that just like to throw down. So you know we're uh, we're coming with everything. I think uh, I think a lot of the things that I do are going to be able to beat him, but uh, for sure training hard for it. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, where do you see you know your biggest advantages in this matchup? Um, I think my biggest advantage is always in jujitsu. Um, it's just, you know, the guy I'm fighting isn't a black belt. It's, that's a huge step up to have. Um, but I think just technique and, you know, <laughs> whoever's going to be able to gut it out more, it's, it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be a tough fight. So, uh, whoever's going to be able to take more, it's going to, it's going to. For sure. Like I said, like I said at the top of the show, man, I've never seen you in a boring fight and the party is no different, man. He's never been in a boring fight either. He likes to come in there and throw hands as well. So I'm circling this one on the fight card. It's going to be, I like I would like to say, one of the fight of the night contenders, I think. Um, It's going to be an absolute dog fight and I I can't wait to watch it. Um, You know, we haven't seen you in the Cage Titans cage for a while, man, um, or competing in MMA for that matter at Cage Titans. So how do you feel being back? Are you excited to be back at the Memorial Hall? Yeah, man, I, I'm stoked. It's a, uh, it's just it's such a nice promotion to fight for at Cage Titans. I did like a, one of those grappling cards. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember you on that the, one. Yeah, the team one. So, uh, it's just like you know, I went back and I saw how well the fighters are treated and like, just the little things that they do. It's just you know, I, I'm really looking forward to that to, uh, just being taken care of a little bit, you know. For sure. Uh, you know, selfishly, I'm excited to be able to see you fight live. It'll be my first time seeing you fight live. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Uh, what can me and the other fans at uh, Cage Titans at Plymouth Memorial Hall, what can we expect from you when that cage door locks on March 18th? Yeah, it's just going to be, you know, I don't know, man. I think this fight speaks for itself. <laughs> you know, like the way Joe fights, the way I fight, it uh, it's just, it's a recipe for a good fight. So, uh, Get excited, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, with this win, man, you will be a Cage Titans pro champion. I know you were a Cage Titans amateur champion at one point in your career. Um, how does it feel? How is it going to feel for you to have that full circle moment, you know, have Amy Gold and then now have Pro Gold wrapped around your waist? Yeah, yeah, it's going to feel good. I mean, I've liked this fight, whether it was going to be a title fight or not. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm excited that I'm going to go five rounds with him. But, you know, I. I'm just happy to have this fight. Like the title is yeah. just gonna be like the icing on the cake, but you know this fight's winning. This fight will be more important to me. Hell yeah! Um, ideally, man, for the rest of 2023, you know the the year is still early. It's just you're fighting at the in the middle of March. You got plenty of time for the rest of the year. Um, ideally, how many fights would you like to have uh, before the end of 2023? Um, I'm getting married in June. Oh, congrats, so. man! That's Thanks, awesome. Man. Thank you. That's gonna it's going to kind of mess up my summer a little bit yeah. or, you know, early spring, summer. Um, so hopefully I can get two or three in by the end. Yeah. So what is it? February? Yeah. So we got yeah. plenty of time. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe two more in, hopefully. So we can count on you not taking any short notice fights before your wedding and showing up with a couple black guys. Unfortunately not. No, no <laughs> my fiance would not be happy about that. Yeah, I'm, sure she, I'm sure she would not be happy. Um, <laughs> We talked about it a little bit earlier, man. That March fifth, that March fifteenth show, uh, Dana White's going to be at for Combat Zone with the Looking for the Fight crew. I know you got some of your teammates on there. Um, yeah. Will we be seeing you in the building at all, supporting your fighters and uh, whatnot? I know it's fight week for you, so it might be a little difficult, but 
Maybe. I might make it out. Uh, I got that whole week off, so I might, you know, if I'm rested up, I'll probably go out. Um, but we'll see how I'm feeling, dude. <laughs> when it gets that close to where I'm cutting weight, it's just it's not yeah, good. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, yeah, like I said, it's only a few days out from your fight, so you'll be, like, in, right in the middle of weight cutting and, you know, dialing yeah, yeah, in. Cool. So I wasn't sure if you were going to make it out or not. Yeah, I'll try. I'm going to try, but we'll see. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Before I get you out of here, uh, I got. I usually end with a few like fun, random questions. Um, if you want to rattle off a few of those, and and then we can get you out of here. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Uh, first one, easy one. Uh, post fight meal. Do you have anything in particular that you go for? Um, every single time I have mint chocolate chip ice cream. After every, really, I don't know why. I have yeah. no idea what it is, but I gotta have it. That is a weird one, man. I haven't heard that before. Normally <laughs> it's some kind of like big meal, but mint chip ice cream. I'm, I can get down with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, that's that's what I go for first. What do you think of those people that don't like mint chocolate? I don't care about them, dude. Yeah, I don't, like I don't, the ice cream I don't care about them either, bro. <laughs> um, outside of fighting, bro, do you have any uh, hobbies? Uh, yeah, I uh, I I fish from uh from the surf a lot, so mm. uh, that's kind of my big thing, just fishing. I also have a boat, so uh, nice. You know, I, that's like my my other love other than fighting. My there you go. Is it uh is it more of like a hobby type thing, or do you like commercial fishing stuff like that? No, nah, no, nah, it's just a hobby for me. Nice, so that's awesome. Uh, okay, let's get into movies or TV shows, man. Which one would you, do you prefer? Oh, uh, movies. Do you have a favorite? This one always stumps people. They can never pick one. Yeah, no, I never really thought about it. No. Nah, man, I I gotta get back to you on that. All right, all right, you guys let me know. Uh, a couple weeks, bro, UFC 285. We got a big one, John Jones versus Cyril Gaon. Uh, Jones making his return. Do you have a prediction for this fight? How do you see it playing out? It's tough doing that, dude. He's He's been out for so long. Mm. Um, you know, Jones has. It's, uh, it could go either way. I mean, I I can't ever count John Jones out, so it's... Yeah. It is. <laughs> I think it's going to be, you know, just speaking about the fight a little bit, I think it's it's going to be crazy him coming back after such a long layoff going up to heavyweight versus a guy who is a true heavyweight but moves like a middleweight, you know what I mean? The way that yeah, the yeah. way how Ghan is so athletic and elusive. I think it, the matchup is going to be crazy. I can't wait for it. I think the thing about Ghan is, like, I think all of his advantages were all the same advantages that um, Jones had against the light heavyweights. Mm. A little bit longer, a little bit, you know, a little bit bigger. So this one might be tough for John, but I, I can't count him out. I know. I, I do the same thing. I'm like, it, it's a much bigger guy than John's ever fought before in his career. Um, but, you know, like everybody says, it is John Jones. The guy can get a W yeah. versus anybody. We haven't yeah. seen the dude lose since he's been in the UFC his entire career, man. It's nuts. No, that one loss on his record was, uh, was like a DQ. He has a DQ. Yeah. All right, man. Well, John, I thanks thanks for coming out and taking the time, man. I appreciate you. Before we get you out of here, do you want uh, anything you want to shout out? Any social media handles you want people to come find you at, or any sponsors that you want to shout out before we get you out? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just um, Triforce MMA, obviously. My boxing coach, Vic Fagnan. Uh, all the guys at Triforce. Um, my sponsor, uh, Andiamo. He makes my shorts. He's nice. you know Vinny Tedesco. Does a great job. You guys can check him out. Um, other than that, that's it. Cool, man. Hell yeah. All right, brother. I appreciate you taking the time. Best of luck on the 18th. Um, if I see you walking around the building pre-fight, I'll come say what's up. Um, All right, Yes, sir. Thanks for taking the time, man. I'm down for the count and he can't even talk now. This MMA, what we talking about? Yeah, you tuned into the pod now. Gonna be hard for you to stop now. Yeah, we caged in. Yeah, we caged in. Yeah, we caged in.